there. Good morning. F you. All right, so maybe you're here on vacation, maybe you live here and you've got a dock or you've got like a kayak and you say to yourself, I want some crabs for dinner tomorrow night. You take a couple crab pots out and you bake them and you leave them out overnight. And then you come back the next morning and you've got one less than you started with. So bummer, you lost a pot and they're not cheap. And you lost out on the crabs that you could have caught with it. So yeah, that was fun and games, but to prove how, we'll say to prove how committed we are here, we actually did just lose a pot and I have to go find it tomorrow morning. But that is literally how easy it is to lose one of these crab pots. So point proven. Hey! <laughs> oh, I wonder if you man, caught anything. Your line. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, coins this as a derelict crab pot or a ghost crab pot since it's still down there but it no longer has a marker or like a buoy attached to it. It's also a navigational hazard since a lot of the water in the Delaware Inland Bays is shallower than two feet deep at dead low tide. But here's the kicker, that pot that you left there, it's still fishing or crabbing. So that pot's catching crabs still as you had intended it to, but those crabs now start to starve over a little while. And they don't just lay there to rest. The cycle's not over. Those crabs become bait for more crabs who then enter into these openings. And the catch from there starts to broaden to things like fish and diamondback terrapins, which is a type of turtle and even birds who poke their heads through the pot at low tide trying to get a piece of the action and end up drowning at high tide. Here's the big problem. It wasn't just you that did it. Now your neighbor lost a pot and your neighbor's brother lost a pot and everybody else on the inland bays lost a pot. And now we have a much bigger problem. I hope you enjoyed that because that took me forever and now I smell. So let me, let me show you something real quick. Oh, somebody buy me a light. Let me show you a quick map that we made during a pilot study a few years back. So in Delaware, there are lots of little creeks in these in inland bays that are pretty popular for crabbing. This is one of the creeks. The area of this creek is about one square kilometer. Let me show you the crab pots that we found. It's a lot. And this is a small area. When you scale this up, to the entire size of all of the inland bays, it comes out to roughly 20,000 pots over this entire area that is Delaware's inland bays. And it's a recreational fishery. There's no commercial fishing. So if all these pots are still fishing within the Delaware inland bays, how many crabs do you think we're missing out on? I think I know somebody. Hi, my name is Randy. I go, just graduated from the University of Delaware and I did my thesis on the impact of derelict fishing gear on a recreational uh, fishery within a mid-Atlantic estuary. Within the derelict pots, we found a lot of uh, different type of uh, swimming fish, uh, swimming fin fish like the spots, uh, croakers, uh, as well as flounders. But uh, the one animal we tend to find the most is uh, Terrapin turtles and those uh, derelict gear happens to be the number one cause of ter terrapin uh, mortality in Delaware. In our pots, we have hole on the side. But the turtle comes in and then they're not able to come back out through there because they're stuck. There's a big impact on the terrapin population. I ha actually have an intern that was with me last year. She looked into the impact of derelict gear into populations of terrapin turtles and it showed that there is a big impact and that uh, the large amount of derelict gear that is found within the inland base, that amount of gear is actually potentially killing a lot of turtles in the area. All right, big question. How much of an effect, if any, does the presence of these pots have on the fishery. The main outcome of my research is actually that the presence of derelict gear does not impact the fisheries because there are too many f uh, crabs out there that it does not impact the, the crabbing fishery itself. Given the limited amount of time for my research, it was done during the same time frame in two separate years, 2021, 2022, during uh, June through July. 
it was the same uh, relatively same temperature same weather same everything longer study time frame will show bigger impact will show that there might be differences during the different times of the year uh, showing their like, gear at different times at different stages of the blue crabs might also show like different impact to the fishery itself every year there are more and more pots that are being left behind they are again center for inland base keeps trying to take out but you take one out you end up with two more in so you're not really making much of a difference unless you get more people involved not again mark <laughs> What the heck? So we're normally a pretty techy operation, but we're here today to show you that you don't really need all the fancy stuff. So this is a consumer grade fish finder from Humminbird, and there's lots of companies that make these things. It has a side scan sonar, which is a pretty common feature, and it allows us, since we're in shallow water, to be able to see these crab pots all around here clear as day. We're going around today marking all of the crab pots, just hauling them up with a grappling hook and then putting a marker buoy on them. And then we have some volunteers coming in pretty soon to actually pull them up and clean them off. And quick disclaimer, what do I exactly want to say? What should I say, Taylor? Taylor, what are you doing? Just looking busy mostly? Don't be dumb. Don't be dumb. <laughs> And quick disclaimer, please don't just do this on your own. This is our job. We have a permit. We're on a NOAA funded project, but we're open for volunteers next year. So please click the link in the description for more. A tag, like, and subscribe. <laughs> that? Follow me on that Patreon. Yeah. Join my Patreon and my OnlyFans. We have a permit. Please help us volunteer next year. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Woo! All right, Mark, what's going to happen first? Is the boat going to sink or are you going to pull it up? Dilution, yes. How's everybody's experience today out of 10? Thank you for hanging out with us today. I think it's about time that Mark and I warm up. Um, if you like this one, please feel free to give me a like or subscribe to the channel. That really helps me get some of this semi-wholesome uh, science content out to all of you and the people who can't really see it every day. Also, don't forget to check out how to volunteer with Sea Grant for next year. We'll see you next year. What a day. <laughs>